Hello everyone, how's it going? So today we're going to see how we can do a license plate detection using one of the machine learning libraries. Especially here in this case, we're going to be using YOLO version number three. So I'll show you how this is being done. And before I go into the code, let me explain to you that this particular code is using the weights file or the training file that was generated by this repository. And it looks like uh, the gentleman's name is Ali Torani. And he, along with his mates, have tried to pull up, publish this paper, a real-time license plate detection method using deep learning. And this paper is expected to be published in the October 2020 conference. So it's not published yet, but they were kind enough to release the weight file. And you can download this weight file from here. But I'll show you how we, I implemented this weight file in our code. So again, it's describing the use of YOLO version three, and they had trained on about 300,000 samples that was used. And uh, to note, they trained on Arabic license plates. So you can see these are all Arabic from the uh, Middle East side, and these are those license plates that are being used. However, whatever images I've tried so far, it worked perfectly well. So there's no issues with that. It's almost the same thing. The digits are of course different, but the location of the license plate in all vehicles are pretty much the same thing. So it's working out in our vehicles as well. So with that being said, let's go into the code. So if you look into the description, there is this link for the collab link. Go ahead and open it up, sign it with your own account right here, and you will come up with this page. So the first step is to, if this channel is helping you, if this video is helping you, look out the channel and see what kind of videos I'm putting up. It's basically in the field of AI, machine learning, computer vision, AI, robotics, and IoT. So this is all in that field, and uh, the idea is to come up with different types of challenging applications in order to help us grow in our skills together. So if it's something that is helping you, go ahead and do subscribe so you are updated with all my up recent new applications. So uh, the next first step is to look into the runtime. Go into the runtime and here it will say change runtime and it will be GPU. So make sure it should be GPU, not none. In, in your case, uh, my, since I already changed, it's giving me the option of GPU right away, but your might be set to none. So click here and then make sure it's GPU and then save because that's what we need for YOLO. It would run without a GPU as well, but since it's using one of those libraries, it's better to run on a GPU. Now, the next step is to first clone the GitHub repository. Now, this is my version of the same repository. I had forked that same repository into my accounts because I wanted to upload some images that were gonna be used for this tutorial. So I'm cloning my repository and I'm changing the directory. So if I play this, it will copy this repository and it will co copy this into our collab version. So if I open this folders page, you can see now it says only sample data. And in a few seconds, once this is done, it will show all the other files for us. So let me close this and you can see how now the YOLO license plate detection is up and running. It has all the files from the repository. Now, the next step is to download the weights file. This weights file is pretty heavy and that's the reason it's not part of the repository. So we have to download it again and we are downloading it from the author's Google Drive. So play this and it will download the weights file into this particular folder right here. And you can see that it's downloading. So it's downloaded about 250, 45 MB already. And it will be right here. So if I close this and refresh it, so if I close and open it back again, the weights file is right here. Only if I can find it. Nope, it's not yet there. Let's close it and open it back again. And for some reason, it's still not there. It should be model start weights. Yes, it's right here. Uh, for some reason, I was blind to say it. But that's the file and that's the weight file that we're going to be using. Now, this is the code. The, this is this is a different code. It's not the same code which they used in this application. It's uh, one of the codes that we used in the past. And I just modified that code to run for this application. So the most important files are the model weight files 
and the darknet yolo version configuration file and the classes.names file so the this is the configuration file for yolo version 3 uh, it has all the information about how the network is set up and how the deep convolution neural networks are being set up that's that's all present here and the weights file are nothing but the training files and classes.names file specify what kind of an object it is trained on so if you cl open the classes.names file right here it will show you that it has only one which is the license plate and uh, i had this question being asked in one of the other videos where uh, the uh, people were using the coco.names file and it has about 80 objects in it how do i reduce it to just concentrate on those objects that they were interested in so this is one such example now this class.name file everything else is removed and only the license plate file is available so that's how this is being done but uh, now let's go into the next step here I'm just defining some color variables that's something which I defined earlier in order to use for the drawing purpose like uh, you'll see later on down, down the lane that uh, when you're drawing when you're detecting the object I'm just specifying where the object should be drawn so here the next step is to just to uh, find out the current you know, height width and uh, you know, information about the shape of the file so whatever image that we are loading it's calculating the height width of the current shape and then by using blob from image we're changing those things into what the original file was done now what does that mean uh, these guys uh, these gentlemen right here they trained this li license plate detection on their own images they captured their own images and they trained on their own images now these images were set on a different brightness different timing of a day and different color the camera used was different so it has all those properties that are linked with the with an image which is the brightness the type of camera the color everything is linked with it so and the images that we are going to provide here there are it's bound to that our image will not be the same way our image may not use the same camera our image may not have the same color profile so with if those all issues come across then your machine learning application will be thrown off and it will not do a proper job so for that purpose we use this blob from image function and this function changes this the information this information of the image into that same color profile which the uh, which the original authors were using so we are just changing in those those properties these are all properties the size the color the width everything is being changed to the original uh, weights file which these guys had used so with that being said we are converting it uh, converting the image into that particular shape which is now in under blob and we're using that blob into and we're creating that yolo file and this yolo forward will go ahead and do the detection for us so all just these three steps these three steps are doing the job for us and right it here in the outputs file it will give out all the information about the objects so that's done that's the job of the machine learning that's all the machine learning code is about those three lines that's it the next part of the code is all about processing that information and displaying it on the image so this whole big uh, chunk of code is just for displaying the object now the first step is to identify what all out outputs are there and among those output it could be that these outputs are erroneous so we do some pre processing and make sure making sure that the object that is being detected is definitely a license plate or not for that purpose there is a confidence score which is also part of the outputs file and it describes what kind of confidence it is and we are using only those confidences that are more than 50 percent which is given by 0 0.5 so only those confidences that more that are better than 50 percent are we are using here and we are drawing and we are identifying where these objects are so normally yolo gives out the information of the object uh, with the center of the coordinate but for us in order to draw the rectangle in OpenCV we need the bottom bottom right coordinate of the rectangle and the top left coordinate of the rectangle and for that purpose we identify the width and we identify the x and y coordinate of the top left corner with that we come to uh, uh, we come to the uh, information about the boxes where where the bounding boxes of those license plates are and we just add it to the boxes array and this boxes array 
now this again we do another step which is the non non maximum suppression where if there are any erroneous objects like for example if you come here now it's in this particular case it is a very good example that we were able to detect the license plate very nicely in on one blocks but uh, if you look into the issue of non maxima suppression if i click here uh, we should come up with this page and i'm trying to find out which is which one would be a good example to show non maxima suppression i think this one might be a good one let's see if we have a paper it's requiring us to download it will not open up in the browser for us let me see if i can find maybe by image search had something better let's see i want to show you what non maximum suppression does for us so yes this is a very good example this is by image search.com so you can see that uh, this this is the face and yes there is only one face but you can see there are about three bounding boxes and why is that? I mean, it's almost the same. It's the same face, but why is it giving you three bounding boxes? A slight difference, slight difference in the position of the ear, a slight difference between the position of the eye, face, and jawline can cause that issue, and it creates these uh, multiple bounding boxes. So even though there is only one face present in this page, in this particular image, it's giving us three bounding boxes, giving the, the impression of three faces present, which is definitely wrong. So for that purpose, we use non maximum suppression, which, re which eradicates all the erroneous boxes and uses only the, the that one which is the most important which is the most crucial one so if any bounding box which is next bar next to each other and which is almost covering the same object it is all removed and only one of them is used and that's the job of the non maximum suppression so with that uh, we uh, i only get one box from for that particular image and we use uh, open cvc rectangle and put text to draw the rectangle across the bounding box and write the text across the bounding box so I'll play this and I'm defining this as a function. So if you notice right here, up here, I'm using, uh, I'm defining this function called as object detector. And this function object detector we will be using later on to uh, call on our images or on even on videos. So you can see right here, this function when it's called, it returns this image and this image will have the bounding box of the rectangle drawn on it and even the text present on it. So with that, we have all the image processed. Now, the first step is here. We are going to try and test it on an image. So I have this image, which is part of the repository and card0.jpg. If you want to test it on your own image, you can, of course, upload up here. Click on upload and upload whatever image you want to test it with. In fact, it can. this code will also work with videos. So upload whatever you want to and then change the file name right here. So if it's an image, change the file name right here in card.jpg and I'll show you how we can do it for videos in the next step. But uh, if you if you have an image, change it to card0.jpg. So here I, I go ahead and play this. It will open up this image. It will, it will send to the object detector function and it will give us the image back which has the drawing on it. And the next step right here is all about displaying it on Colab because Colab uh, doesn't, uh, it's not able to use the OpenCV image show command so it's going to be displaying it on collab using matplotlib so that's the reason we are using plot here and you can see this particular image where the license plate is very nicely detected and it has the bonding box on it and it's able to detect for us so uh, coming back there is another image car1.jpg if you want to try it out you can try changing the file name right here and it will up detect the license plate the only difference between this image and that image is that this image has a very high resolution for which purpose the uh, Im the text and the detection would be very small and if you want to increase that you can always come back to the main object detector function and change the font value the font scale is only three you can increase that if you see the text is very small so i mean it's something that only if you're concerned about now that's with the images now coming down to the last step for videos so the same thing go ahead and upload right here on the main file upload the video you want to test it with and change the upload folder to whatever uploads folder you have and uh, write down write down i'll i'll, I'll put down uh, write the file name 
file name that way people are not confused because they might think cars.mp4 is part of this thing so yeah write down the file name whatever you whatever video you want to test it with and it will call the object detector function and detect all the images and it will write the image into a video file called output.avi which will be stored right here in this folder so with that it's pretty much easy it releases once it's done it releases and it closes all the windows and it co closes the function for us so with that we come to the conclusion we can see that it's a pretty easy uh, right away implementation of license plate detection and this is how we can use uh, and if you want to use and detect what recognize what text it is you can always use pi text tesseract and i have another video in the on this channel and i'll you can use that video to see how we can do pi tesseract and i'll link the video in the description here for your reference as well so with that i come to the conclusion and i'll sign off so you guys take care stay safe and bye bye